Andy was just a day off today, um, played last night, and uh, we knew Nilly was going to practice today, so having three goalies, just thought it was a good opportunity to give Andy a day off. Uh, Nilly to get out there and get some shots. Uh, for him, it's just the next step in his recovery uh, to start to practice with us and uh, see how he feels. So he's going to practice with us, keep going, and as long as he keeps getting better, he'll keep getting closer to playing. Pretty high emotion night last night. How do you uh, gotta get the guys to grind up these last two games on the home side? I think guys are having fun coming to the rink. I think we got a real good group of guys. Um, they know where we're at <coughs> uh, as a group, as an organization. We have to continue to get better, uh, and we're having fun doing it. And uh, um, you know, we're we're playing, like I said, uh, playoff games all the way in. These teams need these points, and it's fun uh, for our guys to be in competitive games that matter. Um, you don't want to be playing in games that don't matter. And uh, these are their games that matter throughout the league, and it's better for our guys. And uh, I have no doubt, and I have a very few games this year that we don't play hard, and we'll play hard again tomorrow. Will Jays play tomorrow, Howard? Um, we got to see on the uh, health standpoint and uh, everything else that's uh, off the ice what exactly happens. I'd like to get them in right now after winning a couple in a row. You don't really want to pull guys out, I think. To a man, there really isn't a guy that deserves to come out. So um, we'll see uh, overnight here what happens and uh, make a decision in the morning. But he, he will get in very shortly. If it's not tomorrow, it'll be, re- it'll be uh, likely Saturday. Would it be weird to face the dog first game? Yeah. Um, you know what? A great guy. Like, I, I can't say enough before yesterday, before our meeting, you know, I told the boys we lost a good man. He, you don't find guys like him very often, um, or, or there is, but there's not a ton of them that are completely maintenance free, that show up to play in a good mood every day, good teammate, help younger guys. Um, can't say enough of what he, you know, what, what he's been around the room for me as a first year coach. Um, and I wish him nothing but the best. Uh, yeah, but I mean, he's got to he's got to get out there and, and see for himself. I mean, you got to uh, you know you got to do what sometimes what's right for your career, and sometimes the organization's got to uh, do what they got to do as well. We got a bun- bunch of young kids we want to get in and, and look at, um, but uh, you know we wish him all the best in Winnipeg, and if he can get that team in the playoffs and get playing good, it's only going to be better for him. We know it's a business, you know these things happen, but you know everyone seems very close in the room and such, so. I guess even from your time as a player and and coaching these guys, what's the trade deadline like from a personal, emotional standpoint? Well, it's, I mean, certainly for a a coach, it's when you, you know, you get players and you've worked with them a long time, especially if you've had a guy for a long time, it's hard to see him go. Um, You know, for the player itself, it's the guys with families. That's probably the toughest. You know, if you're a young guy, single guy, and you're you're moving teams, that hurts, but it's easy to uproot and go. It's when you have kids that are in school and, and things like that. I think that's the toughest part about the trade deadline in the National Hockey League is uprooting your family, the school situation, all that kind of stuff. That would be the toughest part. Which was the stronger emotion to you as the coach uh, after Duclair's goal? His, the emotion of him getting that monkey off his back or seeing how the bench responded to him getting that monkey off his back? Well, it's obvious the teammates love him. And uh, I was cheering for him all the way down the wing out loud on the bench. Like, it's over, it's over. And uh, the guys really like him and, and, and they're happy for him that he scored. And it's just, that's when you know you got a team that's starting to come together off the ice is when they cheer for each other um, and they stop worrying so much about themselves and their own stats. And for me, that's a great building block. I'm starting to see it here in the room with our young guys are starting to mesh and stick up for each other. Like, you you know, even maybe if I'm, um, you know, on a guy in the game, able to play, they always stick up for each other. And that's great to see. Is that a situation you want, you know, you don't, you want him to score. You give him that opportunity in the last minute as much as you, if you can find an opportunity. Yeah, and, and you know what? The other games I didn't when the net was out. Um, I didn't think he played as good. I think his last three games he's been really good. He deserved it. And, uh, you know, sometimes, too, is you put out completely defensive players at the end and you sometimes you stay in your, in your zone for a minute straight. Um, somehow goal scorers and guys that want to score find a way to put it in the empty net and end it. So, um, you know, it was good for Duke to get that. What did you say that fighting ready? Try that you make sure you get the goal instead of twenty. Well, yeah, I mean that's that. I, I think everyone knows that's what Pager. It's not about the accolades for him. Um, he continues to to help our guys get better. Uh, he knows, you know, what that meant to a guy like Duke to get that off his back, and for him to score a third goal or, or Duke to get it off his back. I think every guy in that room would know that Pager would pass that buck. We said the other game, you know, already predicted that Duclair would score yesterday. So are you gonna? Give him the eight ball more often. <laughs> yeah, and you know what? Uh, uh, 
Artie was great too. I mean, Artie scores two goals. Uh, I think he went to get 13 now on the year. Um, you know, he played really well. I, I liked uh, uh, him and uh, uh, Nick Paul um, and, and the Sabrin line, and then you know, summon back uh, Batherson for some shifts there. I thought they they were a big difference in the game. Nick Paul's one of the more underrated guys when it comes to um, defending uh, and allows Artie to play a little more offense. He can cover him, and uh, we look uh, if we can get that every night from that line. You know, we're we're gonna have a much better chance to win. You, uh, I know the goaltending the day before you don't talk about. However, you don't want to mess with your lineup. It sounds like also he's one two. You talked about riding the hot hand. Do you go back to Craig Anderson tomorrow? Um, well, it's something I got to talk to PG about. Um, a lot of times I like to look at records throughout the league too. How a guy played against certain teams. Um, you know, as much as even when Hoggy was hot too. Um, you don't want guys to sit very long, so I, I don't want Hoggy sitting for seven and ten days. Um, so he he needs to get one of these starts. We'll talk about which one it's going to be. Um, you know, but Andy is uh, he's finding ways to win for us right now, and that's something we got to take into consideration. So Andy gets the Montreal game because his numbers are really good against Montreal. Pretty good against Winnipeg too. So I don't know. We'll have to look at him, but. I, I like you're digging in though. You're working anyways. Um, yeah, we'll, we'll let that out closer to game time. <laughs> What's up, folks? All right, thank you.